mini turntable. This is the second one, in fact, that I've made for this layout. They are both based on the DAPL kit, which is a little flimsy, and that was the problem with the first turntable. I also made the mistake of building it in permanently to the baseboard, and it was a pain to remove. So, with this Mark II version, I've decided to make it fully removable. Anyway, it's all connected up. The power is connected by a plug underneath, which um, I've removed, and I will now uh, dismantle the turntable and take it away from the board. Okay, I'll remove the man who's not fixed to anything. Uh, neither are a couple of the little bits in here, like the rails, so I put those on one side. And the centre section here hides two screws. It's just held on with a little uh, couple of blobs of blue tack. So that can come away and the blue tack can be removed to reveal uh, two screws, one there and one there. Having loosened both screws, I can now um, remove the whole of the uh, track turntable unit. The screws that hold the turntable in place need to be accessible, so they're easily hidden under little huts, or in this case, a couple of oil drums. With them revealed, the screws that hold the turntable can be removed. Once completely removed, the rotating part can be taken away. It's held by a single grub screw, which once slackened, allows the turntable unit to be lifted away from the base. Power for the unit is taken from the track and is fed to this socket here, where it is distributed to the track on the turntable bed and through the DCC decoder to control the speed of the motor. To power the unit I bought this 12 volt DC motor and gearbox from eBay for about £12. At the heart of this project is this double aluminium ring. I found it on eBay and they are sold in various sizes for making lazy Susans. This one is 12 inches across or uh, 30 centimetres and there are various holes in it for mounting uh, onto, the, um, onto the Lazy Susan and I've just fixed a wooden bar across here screwed underneath on the inner of the two rings. These rotate and they rotate on a whole load of ball bearings that run in here. So it's, it's a very smooth in operation and there is a access to those ball bearings along one edge and you can take them all out, separate these two pieces of aluminium and clean the whole thing up. I had to sort of cut through into the wood here to, to make a really stable uh, attachment to the motor shaft and because this radio knob has a, a, a brass insert which fits the shaft and the grub screw, this makes a very positive uh, attachment to the motor. It's fixed in place with some epoxy putty, so it seems quite firm and solid in there. If I turn it over, you can see how freely this moves round, and all the motor does is just rotate it. All the weight is supported evenly on this aluminium ring. I glued the circle of track supplied in the DAPL kit to the inner aluminium circle. The track rotates when the table turns. I'm happy with this compromise because the table is more stable. I'm not quite so happy with my current solution to getting the power to the turntable track. Power is taken from the main track by the socket shown earlier. The two wires are connected to two brass posts that stick up above the baseboard. The track on the turntable 
is connected by wire to two phosphor bronze pickups. When the track turns to its correct position, the wires touch the posts and power is connected. This system is acceptable to me as I do not, at the moment, run locos with sound or lights. The purpose of my turntable is simply to turn round locomotives. However, the contact points are very small, which is making the track positioning unnecessarily critical. This needs modifying and I will post a video of this in the near future. The turntable is correctly lined up to run the locomotive off. Um, as it is then you can see quite clearly from this closer up shot that the uh, phosphor bronze wiper is in contact with the brass post. When reassembled the turntable track bed hides all the workings. The track bed is part scratch built with details added from the Dapol kit. The track base is plasticard 2mm and onto which I have glued the girder structures, uh, one on each side, from the Dapol kit. The track is then glued onto this and then ballasted with polyfiller. The walkways are shaped from 1mm plasticard. Planking is simulated by cutting grooves in the plasticard. Coloured acrylic paint is applied and quickly wiped over to give a wood grain effect and then finished with a dark oil wash to pick out the detailing. The handrails are made from one millimetre plastic rod. All other details, including the little winder mechanism there, is from the DAPL kit.